Good day, everyone. Getting ready here. It's uh, the weather's uh, getting cold, so we're out of summer. The high temperatures are gone. So two reasons I'm doing an oil change. One specifically for temperature reasons, and the other is it's time for an oil change. Also, almost on this bike, so you should change the oil every 5,000 kilometers or 3,000 miles, or they say six months. Um, what I do is I go with conditions. Uh, depends how hard I'm riding the bike, whether it's fall or summer. So. I'm kind of in that uh, range there. Uh, I'm changing mine at about 4,000 this time. Let's just talk about oil really quick. I made some notes here. So basically what I'm going to put in this bike today is 10W40 because I'm going to start running. It's getting into uh, fall here. Uh, winter's coming up and basically 1040 is good for minus 10 Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius or 14 Fahrenheit to 104 Fahrenheit. Now I usually run 20W50. It's extremely hot here in the summer. That's basically the heaviest oil they recommend and so that's a plus 10 up to 45 plus Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit up to 113 plus Fahrenheit and I came across an option in the manual now you could go with 10 W50 it basically covers all the temperature ranges between those two um, however I just find when it is really hot out I like to use the 20 W50 it just seems to stay a little bit thicker might be a little bit more durable but that might be a good option uh, to go with a, a 10W50 if you don't want to mess around with different uh, uh, viscosities and stuff. So, what we're going to do, I'm at 4,000, a little bit over 4,000 kilometers, but the weather is getting cooler, so I'm going to change the oil. I'm going to go with this 10W40. And basically, the reason I'm doing that, it's a little bit more suited for the upcoming driving I'm going to be doing. Uh, make sure it's for motorcycles. Uh, don't use normal car oil and uh, on the 250 uh, these K&N 140 filters uh, work fine get yourself a little funnel um, this 12 mil that's for the drain plug on the bottom and you're gonna need a I believe this is a 14 this is for the oil fill and then a little 5 mil like an allen wrench key or whatever you have but that's a 5 mil get yourself some paper towel and something to drain your uh, oil into and the other thing that I do now I don't know how you want to accomplish this but um, I go over how I set this up in my other video but what I do is I get my bike nice and level like this I just put a strap up there and you're not putting a whole bunch of weight on on your roof system or anything it's just to keep the bike nice and uh, I guess vertical and nice and level so the wheels are both even on the ground and what this helps, and it's not necessary to do this, but what it really helps, if you have like a uh, skid plate or whatever you want to call it under here, uh, if the bike is nice and level, when you drain the oil, it comes straight out. And so before you get going on this, what I'm going to do, very important, I'm going to take this thing for a little drive and get it all heated up nice because you don't want to drain the oil when it's cold. You want to get it nice and mixed up so if there's any garbage in it, you know it's gonna get flushed out okay so step one we're gonna get this bike warmed up take it for a ride and as I said it's about 10 degrees Celsius or about 50 degrees Fahrenheit so make sure the switch is on and let's get the key turning start her up So make sure you get your drain pan ready here. The oil drain is located, uh, it's actually closest to the kickstand, so I guess if you're sitting on the bike, left hand side, and this is the uh, 12 mil. So just get that up in here, get it hooked on there. There, I think it's... Yeah, that's all it took. It broke loose. That's all it snapped was. I just wanted to show you how, how neat this is. Because you don't, you should not end up making a big mess underneath the, the bike uh, skid plate. And there we go. 
So it's coming straight out. Nothing's getting, you know, it's not getting oil anywhere. So it's just coming straight down through the, the hole in the skid plate. Wait until you get a really slow drip or no drips at all. And then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so I still have the drain plug out. And I know normally people would put the drain plug in, you know, right after it's finished draining out. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some paper towel. I'm just going to push it down in here. Uh, this is where the oil filter goes. And this is the fill for the oil. So I'm just going to stick a paper towel there. That'll become evident in a little bit here. And then what I'm going to do, now you don't have to do this. It's just what I do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take out the fill plug. Set it in a clean spot. So the drain plug's still out. I'm just going to pour in like, I don't know, a couple ounces of oil. Oh, there goes the train. But anyways, just a few ounces of oil. And we're going to let that run through. And you can see it start to, to drain out again. And I'm just sort of flushing out any of the remaining dirty oil. Uh, I do that with car engines also. In my sequence of things, I'll put this plug back in. But just don't turn it all the way in because we're going to have to take that out again. So there. And once that oil in the bottom finally stops uh, draining out pretty much stopped dripping so you know make sure everything's clean on your drain plug and one thing I'm gonna mention here I have this smaller quarter inch uh, socket 12 mil and I'm not I'm gonna use this because then I don't have to use a long extension or anything it's enough to get up to the drain hole and you always want to start things by hand and get that thing turned in basically you should be able to turn it all the way in by hand there we go until it just start tightens up and then I go to a smaller um, ratchet I think this what a uh, quarter inch and the reason I do that now my other video I have all the specs the torque specs and all this stuff now if you don't have all that stuff you don't need it just don't over tighten things and by using a small little ratchet like this uh, it's almost impossible so I just grab it like that and I don't put any leverage on it I just grab it use my fingers hands sort of centered on the socket and just tighten it up like that and that's all you do don't over tighten it everything's aluminum or else you'll break it not gonna leak it'll be fine you don't have to replace that uh, I think it's copper washer you don't have to replace that it's, it'll be good for a long time the next step we're gonna replace the oil filter now put it down on this kickstand so it's leaning over to the over to the left and that will prevent the oil in theory some of it from you know all running out of here and uh, getting making a big mess there I'm all into this not making a big mess on my motorcycle so um, so let's go ahead and take off the oil filter cover there's just three bolts there's also an o-ring a main o-ring on here and there's a little o-ring uh, on this uh, bolt back here so just pay attention to those you should not have to replace them um, they should last a long time and again these were never over tightened or anything so that's all good and I do have the paper towel here again just in case some does come out but having it at an angle will help prevent uh, some of the mess here I'm hoping nothing comes out of there, but you never know. So I'm just loosening these up. Keep your paper towel handy. But there you go. Just let the paper towel soak up that oil. So I'm just going to take this off of here. These can, by the way, these can only go on one way. There's sort of like a, a larger opening on this end, fits into this sort of whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't know, key or something. It's not really a key, but it fits on there. So 
you can't mess this up. It only really goes on one way. So let me get the new one. And one thing you should do with these, um, we have a little bit of oil in here. Just uh, put a thin film on each side. And I'm just checking, okay, sorry, the O-ring goes just before, it's not actually where the, the bolt is. That's where the oil flows uh, into the chamber here. So there's a little O-ring there. Make sure it's all in place and good. Uh, take a look at the cap, O-ring. Um, make sure it's nice and flat. It looks good. We'll put this on here. I'm just going to set it there for now. I'm going to wipe off uh, the excess oil on here. And then you might want to do a quick check in here. Clean it out. Now again, there's going to be some oil in there. But it might be a good idea. You just take a, take a nice clean rag or paper towel and give that a little... Uh, a little clean out because there might be particles that are stuck in there. Yeah, everything looks good. And the sequence, I usually just I put the filter on uh, on here first, and then get it lined up. Slide that into place. Long one top, top front. Anyway, so we have this all on, actually all finger tight, so we know everything's good. That's part of what I'm getting at. And then uh, when you go to tighten this, just start tightening, gentle. And you can feel it starting to tighten, but you don't want to turn it all away. And you just want to go around the outside, very gentle, get them so they start to snug up. And this is why I like using the small ratchets and stuff, because it's very difficult to hurt something. So just keep going back and forth in a sequence. And you'll be able to feel it. Just be gentle. And you'll notice when you do it this way, you tighten one, the other side might be a little bit looser than it was before. And so you just want to gently go around. And yeah, uh, it, not very tight at all. Just so that they all feel nice and even, equal pressure. And that's good, that's all you need. And then it's just a matter of, uh, we can pull this out. See, we would have gotten a whole bunch of oil all over, plus a lot more if the bike was sitting straight up and down. Now, part of the reason I did leave this plug in, after, the, after I had some oil to push some more through and I put this back in, the reason, I have these tools, you could drop something in there, dirt can go in here, whatever. And you don't want that to happen. Um, for example, on this one socket I have that has the uh, Allen wrench, this thing, for whatever reason, it just falls out. Like, what if that fell in there? That'd be bad, not good. Okay, so let's take the fill plug out. And people say, you know, in my other video, I explain how much oil this thing takes and everything, but people that watch the video, some people are dealing with liters, some are dealing with quarts, and then there's U.S. quarts and Imperial quarts, and it's all silly, but generally speaking, just start off uh, with one liter or one quart, take this off camera, I want to level the bike again now. Okay, this is where it comes in handy uh, when you have the bike level because this is where you can tell how full the bike is of oil. There's a little glass thing there. Uh, the two notch, this notch at the bottom, it's low. The top one is high. Right now it looks like it's okay or not too bad. Um, but again, 
if you don't have your bike level, you can't read it properly. You might need someone to sit on the bike and keep it nice and straight for you. Uh, if you don't have a little setup like mine to keep it level. But So at this point, all I'm going to do, people might agree or disagree. This is what I do. I'm going to go ahead and start filling now. So I have my one liter or about one quart in there. And I'm just start, going to start adding until I bring it up right up to the very top, the max full. And the reason I'm doing that, because once you get the bike going, and we did put a new filter in there, um, that's going to bring the level down. Once the oil gets mixed up and the oil filter saturated. Okay, so I'm going to go until I can just see a little bit of a, a gap. And then, I'm going to fire this bike up as it sits. And most likely, uh, it's going to end up being probably at the correct level. So that's just another tip. You can give that a try. Uh, Alright. Oh, before you start it though, uh, put your cover on or your uh, fill uh, bolt. And uh, otherwise, you know, you're going to have trouble. So take your funnel out. Put the bolt in. Don't over tighten it. And uh, away you can go. We'll check the oil in a second here once I run it. And again, my other video, I have all the specs for this, but once you do this for, for a while, you don't really need to do that, but don't be so concerned about it. And here again, so it just came, this one tightens up really quick, so right away it's like snug, and then again with the hand more centered, not out at the end, just trying to give it a bit of a turn, and you know, that's all it needs. It's going to be, that's tight enough. It's all good so let me start up the bike let it run for a few minutes and then we'll come back and uh, check that oil level it's also a quick way to make sure that everything's flowing in there is just to uh, shine your light in there while it's running and oil should be moving around circulating okay so I ran the bike um, let it sit for like five minutes and Go back and check your uh, oil level and I'm looking at it and it looks just perfect fine and dandy so anyways that's how I do it oh and check for any leaks uh, you know around where your oil filter is see if anything's leaking under the bike um, I cleaned everything nice so I can tell if anything is leaked everything looks good